Hey guys, welcome to part 5 of my Final Fantasy 4 Let's Play walkthrough. It's Momo here and let's dive right into this game. Okay, when we last left our heroes, we just had a new party member and he gave us this neat little hovercraft. Basically, all you gotta do is jump in, press X and then try and follow it across these stones over here. It's kinda hard to sort of like get your way through it, pre-plan a route or anything, but just you're gonna have to feel your way through it. The idea is to really find this cave down here as you as always make sure you save before you actually get into the damn thing and as you can see our new party member edward is at a really bad level five it's not strictly necessary to do a bit of level grinding before you go in so i'm not going to however if you want to feel a bit more comfortable that way you go for it in this cave immediately we'll hit a chest there for a potion and a little further down there's a spider silk spider silk is a really like an end game level item in terms of usefulness what it does is it casts slow on enemies Obviously, that's really great because it really gives you more time to sort of plan your actions and to react as opposed to just constantly on the go. Right, goblins really doesn't do much. They give really crap experience now, especially seeing as we have three characters. So our experience is divided up into three. Bit of a problem, but here we have a new enemy, the red goblin or the domovoi. They basically are a bit more powerful. Their attacks might actually hurt you and... If Cecil didn't hit it, it'd take more than one shot to die. They've got a bit more HP than your standard goblin. All the way to the north is another chest, which we'll get to after this bloody battle. Admantois is really a Final Fantasy staple. He's a really cool creature here. And, well, notice he's weak to ice, so ready as Ice Rod is going to do a shit ton of damage. There you go, she's even out damaging Cecil with item magic. That's something new. There's a gold needle in there. Nothing much else to check here. Let's just head down the stairs. More goblins. The enemies in real are really... Look, we haven't really come to the challenging enemies. You guys need to remember, even though we're on part 5, this game is really, really only just beginning. So trust me, the level curve is going to get a lot tougher right now. Another potion of not much use there. And I see another chest there. Battle, battle, battle. Again... Be careful of these Domovoys, they can hurt you a little bit, but again, it's not going to be too much that you're going to end your game because of it. Nice rod. So you see, now, really I can't kill these guys on a single blow, and they do leave bronze hourglasses. Again, these items have their uses, but personally, I just don't use items. I don't know why, it's like a thing. Let's head up here, and there's that chest we saw. It's a tent, and another one has a potion. All items that we can use, I suppose. And let's head on over down to the exit. We're pretty much done with this floor if these enemies can leave us alone. If you guys remember in a previous, uh, in a previous video, I talked about these flans. The yellow ones are weak to thunder. So a group cast thunder from Redia should kill them. You're going to want to conserve her MP for these sort of battles because as I've said before, 5 MP with Redia's max being only around 70 at the moment, it's not really worth it to use thunder every battle. So try and con it for these battles because we actually need it because Cecil and Eddie aren't going to be able to do much damage to these flans obviously. More goblins and Edward as I said it's not really necessary to level grind because he's so far behind he'll level up pretty quickly even though the experience is split three ways. Down we go there's a chest there with an Antarctic wind which as before casts the blizzard spell. Really I can do it but I suppose you could use it if you run into flans and she's out of MP. Lamia Harp this is a new piece of equipment for Edward this should make him more than a less, well, less of a dead weight, excuse me. He's still not going to be Cecil, make no mistake about that. But his damage might actually be worth it if he actually connects with his attacks. Remember, he's in the back row, so he's going to be doing a little less damage. And his accuracy is way down. But the Lamia Harp does, as you saw in that last battle, it has a little advantage where it's going to actually cast Confuse randomly. Obviously, this is awesome. Because confused enemies, what they'll do is they'll always attack their comrades, but generally one physical attack is all that it takes to knock them out of that status. Again, not a big deal, but considering how shit of a character Edward is, you need to take every single advantage you can find, guys, really. Sandworms don't really have much tricks up their sleeves, they die pretty easy, and they leave really crap experience as it is, so hooray for that. Leshies, Leshies take a bit of damage before they die. I think they're dark elemental monsters, which is probably why it takes, why they take half damage from Cecil's Dark Sword. I don't know. Because he's been killing everything else with one hit in here, but these Leshies seem to be taking more than one whack to die. 
Of note, have you guys noticed their sprite? It's racy to say the least. We're going to explore over here first so that we can go through it. And here we have a save point we can use to heal up with tents if we need to. Do that if you've been using ready as MP, but otherwise just hit those chests for some items. Again, nothing that necessarily we need right now. So just save the game to make sure that nothing bad happens down here. Like I keep, I keep telling you guys this, plan for every contingency. You don't know when your battery is going to die, you don't know when this is going to happen. So use a tent if you like, just to recover up to full HP. And let's go again. We're just going to go back into the previous area here. And let's explore the part of the cave that we haven't yet gone. Straight north we have a potion. Brilliant. Two adamant hoises. Rydia, again, the ice sword will take care of these enemies. No problem. They are weak to ice. And if you confuse them, just try and target the other one. So that you don't interfere with it. It also just prevents you from taking as much damage. Like I did there. You see, I should not have done that. But doesn't matter the damage really wasn't that bad head down over these stairs and up across the bridge and we've got another spider silk again you should try and hoard these as I've said before they are incredible items more leshies and ready I have to go and hit the damn leshy with that you need to be hitting the admin toys girl and there we do it and he's dead this the sprite guys I just I can't this like, who's the target audience? I'm assuming kids, but then again, I'm 25 years old and I'm playing this game, so... I don't know. It's really a confusing one right there. Come on, kill that Ant-Man toys. There we go. Edward, as you guys can see, he's leveling up pretty quickly. Every two or three battles, he's gaining a level. So he's not going to catch Redia and Cecil, but he's going to be not too far behind them. Alright, nothing to see there. I don't know why they put that in just to screw with us, I suppose. There's not even a hidden passageway there. The encounter rate's gotten up, though, I must say. Before, where I would have to walk around for hours to find one battle, now every two steps is a new battle, I mean. It's starting to work on my nerves, just slightly. And down we go. Am I getting confused here? I'm getting a bit confused here. Sandworms, guys, really not worth your time. And they give such crap experience as it is, so I'm, I'm really questioning whether or not we should actually bother fighting them, really. Here we have more plants, yellow jelly. Again, group, th group cast thunder from Redia should kill them pretty damn quickly. I remember in the DS version, these guys were the easiest to farm for the elusive rainbow pudding. Not that I ever damn got one. Jeez, the encounter, the rare rates for these, it's just, it's just sad. You know, sissy harps aside. I, you know, this, this brings to mind the fact that Edward, he's really just such a crap character. I mean... The five-year-old is a, more ba a bigger badass than him. You know, it just, it doesn't seem right to me, guys. It does not. Like, I mean, she's out-damaging him. She's got more HP, more MP, and he's a grown-ass man. Does that not just strike you as slightly wrong? Just a little bit? Ugh, wimp. And this is the final area of the cave. Don't bother exploring the rings to the side. There's not much to see. There is no treasure chest. Trust me, I've checked. Hoping, because this seems like it'd be accessible for treasure, but hey, it's not. So, blue balls, blue balls, that's what they've done to us. Come on, die already! Just make sure that you guys are all at full HP here. You can use a couple of potions to uh, sort yourselves out if you need be, like Edward needed some. And yeah, this is where the ant lion, we're going to get the sample. But somehow I just knew it wasn't going to be so simple. He says it's quite tame, but wait a minute. Just wait a minute. There you go. Of course it wasn't going to be so simple. That would be too easy to fight your way through a dungeon only to deal with the ant lion. I mean, come on. Okay, turn your auto battle off. Now the ant lion's got a pretty interesting gimmick in that it counters all physical attacks with a pretty nasty f attack of its own. He doesn't really attack much, so we're going to try and avoid that. So as you see... Have Cecil just use darkness over and over, and that's all you need to do. 
part song from Edward, that works fine. It doesn't really do much, but I can't think of anything else to do with him. Chocobo from Redia should be your main source of damage with Cecil supporting. That's pretty much all you really need to do to defeat this guy. There's really no gimmick to it. Just try not to attack normally, otherwise you're going to get counter-attack pretty badly. Because Darkness is going to be taking off a bit of Cecil's HP every now and again, toss an ether, I mean excuse me, toss a potion at him with Edward. That should keep his uh, HP up enough so that you can continually spam Darkness. Although, in hindsight, you don't even really need to be using Darkness. As you can see, Redia is doing four times as much as he is. But it'll help, it'll add up, I guess, if you really want to get this battle over with really, really quickly. Or otherwise, if you don't want to be bothered with Edward, you can always hide with him. But yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let's hide with Edward. That might help a bit. Because this is frustrating me, having to continuously skip his turns. Damn it. While the other two just auto battle your way through it. And there you go, the thing died. And we get some nice experience. And that's pretty much all there is to this part. There's going to be a bit of blabber after we obtain the sandfall. They're going to again talk about these ominous signs and omens and all that nonsense. We don't need to listen to this. You can choose to use an emergency exit to get out of here or otherwise ready as warp spell. But I'm going to walk out because I really don't like grinding. So if I can gain a bit of experience on my way out, I'm going to do that. But again, I'm going to end this part here because there really isn't much to see, not much to say. So I will see you guys at the next part. And also, please don't forget to subscribe if you're following along with me. And leave a like on this video and comment. If there's anything you did differently, feel free to let me know. And also, please be sure to check out my blog. I will leave a link in the description below. And with that said, I will see you all next time. Bye.